Hello folks, Double Tap here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing this kit. It's a Woodford Sundrew Real Ale kit. The ABV should come out at 4.2%. It's a 40 point kit made with malt, hops, water and yeast. It's quite a bit of bump from the box, so let me just quickly show you around it in case you've not seen it before. Now, these kits in my local Wilco, they're normally around 23, 25 pound mark, but this one, uh, there was a few of them that were all reduced to, I think it was either 13 or 15 pound, so the whole shelf was empty apart from this one, so that's why I got this one. But on the side we've got some instructions, uh, ingredients, hopped malt extract, malted barley, water hops, uh, dried brewing yeast in sachet, store in a cool place, etc. Best before June of 2019. Oh, okay, so that's probably why they were uh, reduced. Uh, I mean, it's got a good year left on it, or just under, but generally. They don't reduce them until the expiry date's nearly up, and this is a 2019, so... Woodford Sundra, straw coloured and refreshing with citrus notes clearly discernible on both the nose and the palate. The sweet malt and citrus flavours are balanced by the Woodford's distinct hoppy finish. Based in the heart of Norfolk countryside, Woodford's Broadland Brewery has built a um, Enviable reputation for producing superb range of beers, many of them award winning, all are recognised for their impeccable flavour and quality. Right, the real ale kit, this Woodford, Wood, oh, this Woodford's Sondru Real Ale, and there's the mail, <laughs> kit has been produced using only the finest ingredients and is based on Woodford's original grist formulation. Made with the brewery's own choice of hops, the beer you brew will compare mostly favourably to its commercial equivalent. Regional variations in water quality may have a subtle influence of the taste and final brew. We don't have a problem with the water in this area. It's really good to be honest. Let's get it open and have a look. Okay, so got some instructions, we've got some premium ale yeast which is the XRBB69 yeast made in the EU and we've got one, we got two cans, woohoo! This is our first two can kit actually, when I think about it, let me stick that over there, right so have a quick look at the instructions. I know there's a lot of me talking in this one, but... Right, 23 litres. Woodford's beer kits are designed to brew less than 40 pints of beer to match the final beer strength of the commercial equivalent. These include Headcracker, Admiral's Reserve and Nelson's Revenge. Clean and sterilise all the equipment. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. With this all malt, all malt beer kit, you do not need to add any sugar or anything else. Add six litres, six pints, sorry, three and a half litres of boiling water. Uh, okay, so it's pr pretty much a normal beer kit. Right then, everything's sanitised. Got some hot water in here. Also boiled my kettle because I've stopped putting the tins and soaking them in hot water. All I'm doing now is filling the kettle. Once the uh, malt is out of the tin, I'm just pouring it straight in there and filling it with boiling hot water. It seems to be easier if you ask me. So let's get these two open. Oh, I 
like that, you know, and the lid starts sinking. Come on, baby. Here you go. Let's get all that lovely malt off there. And if you were wondering, I have sanitised this spoon. I've just took everything out. But I've now got a problem. I'm going to put that there. Let's get the other one open. I always sanitise extra stuff because I know that at some point I may need it. Right, crack that open. And it's better for you to see stuff like this rather than me cut it out of the video because the chances are you'll run into the same problem with some yourself at some point. Okie dokie then. This is as sticky as you like. Look at that. It's all over my fingers. But it smells beautiful. Mmm. It's like a, a malty honey flavour. Mmm. Quite nice. Okay. Back to the brew. Like a little kid licking my fingers. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera, I'll stick it over here so you can see exactly what's going on in this fermenter. Right then, nice upside down view and that's what we've got in here so it's going to be extremely thick this is. In she pops and like I said we're going to have quite a bit left in this tin. So, I'm going to start with the second one. In you go. And I've got to be honest, the smells coming off these is extremely nice. Right, first tin is almost done, so I think we'll try and stop the flow of that. Going to get a little bit round the tin, not that buffered. Okay, here's the second one. Right, let's do the same with this. There we go, right. Let's put our spoon in. I'm going to come off the camera and I'm going to fill both of these up with boiling up water. one these tins are around the one litre mark so I'm only going to get one and a half of these full because like I say they're about one and a half litres so that's why I've only filled one and a half right let's get that kettle back on let's get this lot mixed in and I'm going to follow the kit's instructions and I'm going to not add any sugar or extra malt. Quite thick this is but that hot water is going to help out in a big way and get this dissolved pretty quick. Very, it's, it's dark at the minute but I believe when we add the water, that is going to proper uh, go down, that is, uh, in colour. It's going to go a lot lighter, I reckon. Right, this is loosening up really nice. I'm going to give our tin a stir. And even though the other one ain't full, Going to give that a little stir as well. I'll fill that up when the kettle boils. Let's carry on with this. Right. Now, what you're looking for here is when you move it, see all that there? That's obviously stuck to the bottom. You want no resistance other than what the resistance of the water is giving you, which will show you that it's all dissolved in. 
come on my beauty. It's feeling pretty loose all round now that is. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to fill my tin up. There we go, second tin's full. Right, let's give these tins another stir. all dissolved that is so where's my towel right I'm going to pick the first tin up I'm using a tea towel to do it because this tin will be red up there's no way I pick this up with my bare hands in she goes and as you can see that is lovely and clean and in the second one goes there we are. That one is exactly the same. Right. Let's give this a good lovely stir. Just to make sure all of that lot is nicely mixed. Oh. Add a bit of a splash back there. Yeah. Okay, we are looking good so far, folks. Right then. Time to move the camera. Right then, we've got all of our kit ingredients in there now. I've given it a proper good stir for a few minutes. What I want to do now is get it up to that 23 litre mark and we'll see where we go from there, folks. So. I'm going to put the water in it, I'm going to get it up to the 23 litres and we'll take it from there. Right then, that's up to the 23 litre mark. Now what I have noticed with this fermenter is, it hasn't got a temperature on it. Because there is a reason and that is because I hardly ever use this fermenter for fermenting. I normally use it uh, for when I'm filtering when I want to filter into another fermenter, stuff like that. So I've always got these spare stick on ones, which is in Fahrenheit and is it centigrade or Celsius, whatever. Um, and they're the stick on type ones. So if I can peel this off, I'm going to stick the thing on. But of course, because I've now recorded, it don't want to peel off. Happy days. There we go. <laughs> right. And what I like to do is I like to stick these right by where the litre mark is. So you're looking at both of them at the same time. And let's stick it nearer to the bottom, like so. Okay. I think we are good with that one. And the temperature is coming down a bit, but I want this around 20, something like that, 20, 22. And it's looking pretty good, this beer is. Got quite a bit of foam on the top, so there goes my foam. And that's my Instagram because I've been posting uh, stuff on my Instagram. Every time I do beer, it goes on Instagram first. Um, pictures that is i don't really put videos on there so if you're not on my instagram there's always a link in the description for that but let me just quickly show you this beer okay here we go look at that and I'll, i've got to be fair it smells absolutely beautiful this does so it has gone that lighter colour. 
but because it's supposed to be like a straw colour, I might even use some beer finings with this one. Oops, sorry about that folks. Right then, I've had a few questions about how to read hydrometers and stuff like that. I'm not going to do a hydrometer video because there are quite a lot of them on YouTube and they're probably a lot better than the one I'll ever do. So check them out folks. It, it, is, it is hard at first when you're working out the hydrometer readings and that and how to actually use it. But once you've done it a couple of times, it becomes second nature. It, it is quite easy. And I mean, you've got the table on here for wine and beer. If you notice the bigger numbers here, I'm not sure if you're going to see them properly. Once it's floating in there, you take the original gravity, which is the gravity without any yeast in it, it'll tell you the reading, but it's got to be without the yeast. So let's fill this up. Okay, it is quite a light brown colour, that is. So I think with some finings in it at the later stages, it might clear it up all that more better. We'll see how we get on. I'm not even sure if I've still got any beer findings. I've got to have a look, so I'm making plans without checking what I've got. I know I've got yeast and all that lot. I've always got Jervin yeast, but uh, as for beer findings, because I don't use them that often, I'm sure I have got a few of them there. So what we'll do is, give that a little shake, that gets all the bubbles off the bottom of the hydrometer, give it a spin, and what it'll do is, the gravity in there, your original gravity, will bring it up to a level, once them bubbles have all gone, and let's just say, it brought it up to there. That'd be 1.070, so that would be your original gravity. And then, once it's all finished fermenting, you take another gravity reading. That gives you your FG, your final gravity, which will be different from the one we've just took. Then, go online, just put in ABV calculator, beer volume calculator, whatever you want. Just put that in. You put your original gravity reading, you put your final gravity reading, and it works out what the percentage of alcohol is, so you'll know the volume. It's so easy, but when you first start out, I know how hard it is, everybody does, and if they say any different, they're bullshitting you, because it's the same for everybody. And it is one of them things, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, it becomes second nature. A lot of people can work out the gravity without putting it in a calculator. I haven't got to that stage yet because I'm too bad and idle. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it ain't hard. Give it a try. Um, like I say, there's more in-depth videos where it will show you um, closer up and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just like a, a little tip while we're doing the actual beer. So, what temperature are we on? Okay, we are a little bit high, but I'm still going to pitch the yeast. It isn't that much higher than what I'd want it to be. So, I can't do this. Let's get the scissors on it. Okay. For the premium yeast, I'm not getting, getting much smell off this. I, I think, personally, it's just the normal stuff that they're bonged in the kits. So... Let's pitch this baby. Sometimes I stir in the yeast, sometimes I don't. Today, I'm in a bit of a yeast stirring mood, so let's go nice and gentle with this and get it in our beer. Oh, lovely beer. Yes. So, once we've done this, we're going to leave it for at least a week. 
I'll take two gravity readings, which you're not going to see. That lets me know if it has stopped fermenting and we'll be good to go. So the next stage will be um, possibly adding finings if I've got it, uh, clearing the beer and also transferring it into our bottler and then bottling the little baby up. Right, I want to make sure all this yeast is off there. Yeah, off the job leg. Do you know what? No. I'll give you one last look at this beer. With obviously the yeast in it. Can't really see that well now and I don't want to move it too much in all fairness. Mm -mm. Right then. So all that's done. I've got my reading here. Let's have a look, see if I can read the bloody thing. Right, 1.05. Okay, 1.0. For I'm going to call it 1.052 for this original graffiti. Yeah, okay. That's got it there. Let's have a look at this. It, it, it does smell nice. It, it really does. Okay, cheers folks. Mm, okay, that is different. That is really different. I think this is going to be nice. <laughs> Happy days. Right then. Get our lid on. Oh, and this one does have the top bung in it. Just so you can see it, folks. Okay. Now I've had this on the drainer, so I'm going to give it a blast with this star sun. Okay. I'm going to bung that in there. Okay. Stick a bit of water in it. Uh, sorry, a bit of star sun, I should say. That'll do us, I reckon. Lovely jubbler. Uh -huh. Aha, That's that. Whoa. Okay. Where's my towel go? Right then folks, I think I'm going to leave it there for our Woodford Sundrew Real Ale kit. Like I say, next stage will be maybe sticking in some finings, also transferring it and we'll put it in another fermenter. That way we'll have the sediment in the bottom of this one and not in our bottling fermenter. So, hope you enjoyed that one folks. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Check out the Instagram, it's always in the description, the link is always there, just click on it, uh, send me the friends request thing, whatever it's called, and I'll just add you to it. So whatever posts I do, just remember these beer kits, if, if I've posted it on Instagram today, you're probably not going to see this video for probably around a month. So what it does, it lets you um see ahead of time what i'm actually doing because i can't do it on the videos all the time because i have to stagger the videos and i've always got a month or two already uploaded to youtube so you're not going to see this for a while and like i said at least it lets you know what i'm doing in the future or as the past as the case may be but you get the idea anyway folks Stick your comments in the comments section, I'll answer them as fast as I can and I'll catch up in the next episode. I'm Double Tap and bye for now.